Welcome to the Blue Oasis Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about your hobbies, the history of them, as well as making a side hustle out of them. All right, let's get to the show. Good morning, everyone. I am your host, Adam Rothstein. And on this episode of the Blue Oasis Podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube, both the history and how it became a side hustle for many people. So, where do we begin? We begin in the year 2005. YouTube was brand new, and you had many sites like Facebook coming out, and MySpace was in its prime as well during this time. Also during this time, you had the iPod come out as well. Now, in terms of video, there was really no alternative to find uh, FMV videos or full motion videos on the internet. It was, it was a little harder to come by, but the precursor to YouTube was a little known site called eBombs World. It was a very early version of YouTube. You had a lot of parodies of certain things, Star Wars, even a Judge Judy video. And, but this was not a platform for your average Joe to upload videos to. But it was a very first, a very important step nonetheless. Once the year 2005 rolled around, the creators of PayPal, Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, and Jawid Karim, were looking for a way to upload videos to the internet with ease. The three of them recognized that there was a market demand for certain content, whether that was Janet Jackson or a music video, they knew that they could build that website so users can find whatever it is they ever wanted to find that was put on video. The next year would be a very important step for its growth. In 2006, YouTube.com slowly grew to become one of the biggest websites of the 21st century. That same year, Google purchased YouTube. Having to deal with copyright infringement issues of third parties, YouTube needed a partner to deal with this issue. So they sold to Google.com in October of 2006. Slowly but surely, they begin to take off and, and many channels start popping up. You have Smosh coming out. You had, uh, I think you actually, you had a lot of uh, small gaming channels come out. And this is actually the f when, where Let's Plays began. It was during the very early days of YouTube and you know cat videos as well uh, but once you actually could um show people that you could sit down and have a conversation and actually put it out there and create so much expansive content did people realize that they could actually film their hobbies and and just act and like just show these short acting things and in fact you've got uh, a lot of um, tech reviews, like really early tech reviews back in 2007 and so on as well. So this, so 2006, 2007 was, were the very first important years where users could show off what they had or what they could do. And there was really nothing like it before. With this, uh, be you had an expansion of journalism. This is a very important step as many new individuals could start their own news uh, channel and 
actually compete with the mainstream media. You had channels such as uh, Philip DeFranco, um, like really early Philip DeFranco. Uh, he actually either deleted his channel or he just switched channels entirely. And uh, he was one of the really first ones to just, you know, talk about what was happening in the news in general. And you didn't actually have to turn on cable at that point. And this was also a time where people were coming out of the dial-up era and starting to get into uh, high-speed networks as well. And this also got into the schools as well. YouTube got into a lot of the schools. With an internet connection in the computer lab, any student could now uh, search a video for their project and could potentially get all the information that they needed. Now, in the early days of YouTube, the 2007s, the 2008s, and 2009s, it, you still couldn't get a full documentary or it was very rare to find. So people were still using Wikipedia and actually going to hard textbooks for their research projects. But during that era, YouTube definitely laid the groundwork for what it would become later on. Now, about this time, I was in my middle school days, and, and it was a very awkward time for me, to say the least. But I guess that's uh, what happens when you're in your uh, preteen years and very early teenage years. So, um, during this time, I was definitely searching up random videos and saw a lot of dancing videos. Um, I didn't get into YouTube, um, back then and it took me about, uh, another decade to really get into it. Um, and, or actually more than a decade plus to really have, uh, the channel that I have now and, uh, make and actually just knowing what I'm doing when I'm putting out videos. So I was more of a viewer and I didn't even have an account back then. And, and to get, and to see the viral videos at the time was still a very new concept for me because I, I just never saw anything like it. I never saw, uh, that you could you know, play the Pokemon theme in the background and just lip sync to it or just go see some guy at a zoo or watch some cats chase a laser. And, and it was very entertaining, uh, at the time. And, uh, it just, it was just something to do. And, and I thought, oh yeah, here's a nice thing. Uh, and it was great entertainment for what it was back then. Uh, once the 2010s rolled around, you had, uh, a lot of parodies come out. You had Star Wars parodies coming out, a lot of that. And slowly but surely, you also had movie reviews. So before YouTube, you had the, uh, Gene Siskel's and the Roger Ebert's of their day. And you actually had to wait for a specific time turn to the channel to get the information and and then just wait. And, or if you couldn't make it, you had to uh, program your VCR and just have that record over it at the time. You know, and it was a very inefficient way of doing that in the 80s and 90s. But with YouTube, you could, uh, someone could just upload their opinion of a movie good, bad, or indifferent, and, you know, people would build brands and reputations on what they thought, and slowly but surely, you know, channels begin, began to grow from that idea. Selling your services uh, was another thing. Uh, you had a lot of clothing lines come out, and even channels specifically with the dot-com 
attached to it as well. This was an early version of sales funneling through the internet. By having your name on a platform such as YouTube, a centralized or rather a main hub of where people go to be entertained and even get information from was very valuable in the early days of the website. With these ideas in place and with the capabilities available, people started to develop side hustles from their hobbies. There was a lot of viral videos such as Chocolate Rain and then you had that Tron guy as well. And they actually got to make money off of their brand. And, you know, they did some interviews as well. And they actually got royalties. These were the first people to actually receive royalties from YouTube as well. So once royalties were being paid out, many people wanted to get in on this. And in the 2010s, you saw an explosion of new YouTube channels. And during that time, you only needed to have maybe a few hundred subscribers to get some ad revenue. Now, for most channels, it was really small ad revenue. People were making maybe five, ten dollars a month from their ads, depending on how many videos they were put out, putting out and uh, who was watching it as well. Today, there's about four billion minutes that are uploaded every uh, day, or or it's a lot of hours. Like let, let's just put that lightly. So if you got a business, if you got a website, if you've got a brand, uh, yeah, you should definitely be on YouTube, which is still the main hub. Now you have competitors such as Library, Twitch, even BitChute is another one. And they definitely do have some share of the video market, no doubt about that. But if you want to, if you want people to find you, use YouTube because it has become the second most popular search engine. So what can we take from the history of YouTube? Well, we know we can grow our channels. We know that we can funnel people back to our websites and sell them goods and services. We also know that we can create an income from YouTube. There are many YouTubers with over a million subs. You have Shelby Church, you have Graham Stefan, you've got uh, Swoozy, and many others. And of course, Mr. Beast and PewDiePie. Who can forget those two? And the thing with that is, you know, they've spent years, if not a decade plus, trying to build up their skills and build up their base and just really rally around it. Mr. Beast is definitely making millions off of his YouTube videos. And depending on the way inflation goes and and how he grows his base, he can definitely he could he might become the first YouTube billionaire as well. So yeah, the so nothing's out of the impossible when you're starting. Now, at the time of this recording, I only have twenty subscribers. Not twenty thousand, not uh twenty million, but uh just just twenty s- subs, that's it. Yeah, twenty subs. Uh I mean, I don't even have two dozen subscribers. Um, I'm actually going to link the uh, my YouTube channel down below. So just a little side note there. If you want to subscribe, if you like what you hear here. So what can you do to grow your YouTube channel? Well, there are many uh, different th- 
things uh, that we can do. 